Axe Pringle with these headlines. President Biden officially announced today he's running for re-election next year. Biden made the announcement in a campaign video. In it, Biden made preserving democracy a central theme. The question we're facing is whether in the years ahead we have more freedom or less freedom, more rights or fewer. I know what I want the answer to be, and I think you do too. This is not a time to be complacent. That's why I'm running for re-election. In the video, Biden takes aim at Republican efforts around the nation to limit reproductive rights, ban books, and restrict voting rights, among other issues. Biden's age has been a concern among some Americans. He would be 86 at the end of his second term. Biden is betting his 50-plus years of experience in Washington will count for more with voters. Republican former President Donald Trump has already announced his candidacy, and Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is expected to run as well. Former President Trump goes on trial today in New York in a civil case brought by advice columnist E. Jean Carroll, who claims that Donald Trump raped her in the dressing room of a luxury Manhattan department store in the 1990s. The case begins today with jury selection in a Manhattan federal court. More from reporter Julie Walker. Former Elle magazine advice columnist D. Jean Carroll says a chance encounter with Donald Trump at a Manhattan department store in the mid-90s led to him raping her in the dressing room. Outside court last year in February, she explained why she was bringing the civil suit. The women in America who have been grabbed and groped and assaulted and raped by men in power and are silenced. And we are uh, working to bring justice. Trump says she made up the claim to sell a memoir. The former president, who is running again, is not expected to show up for the trial, though his lawyers have not ruled out the chance he might testify. Julie Walker, New York. Riot police in Montana removed demonstrators from the State House in the capital, Helena, who were protesting the Republican legislative leader's decision to not allow Democratic transgender lawmaker Zoe Zephyr to participate in a debate about legislation to ban gender-affirming care for transgender youth for a second week. Her supporters brought the House session to a halt Monday, chanting, let her speak, from the gallery before they were escorted out. Zephyr told supporters earlier Monday she plans to continue to speak forcefully against legislation that members of the transgender community consider matters of life and death. Republican leaders in the GOP-controlled legislature have told the first-term Democrat that she must first apologize for saying they would have blood on their hands if they passed the legislation. A shaky ceasefire has been announced in Sudan between warring generals. The fighting has killed an estimated 460 people and has wounded thousands of others. Foreign governments have been scrambling to remove their nationals from the country. Future Story News' Julia Chapman reports on the British government's evacuation efforts in the African nation. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says priority will initially be given to the most vulnerable. It follows the announcement of a U.S.-brokered 72-hour ceasefire between rival groups. Foreign Secretary James Cleverly defended the U.K.'s response after criticism that the country was neglecting its citizens in Sudan. The uh, last few days we have been doing extensive planning uh, across government departments and with our international partners <clears throat> to take advantage of any improvement in the situation and begin the evacuation of British nationals uh, in Sudan. Uh, I'm very pleased that a uh, ceasefire has been announced by the uh, leadership of the factions on the ground and therefore we are initiating um, an evacuation plan. It is important to remember that ceasefires have been announced and have fallen apart in the past, so the situation remains dangerous, volatile, and unpredictable. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Julia Chapman. A new study shows that something as simple as a regular phone call from a friend or loved one can reduce depression and anxiety among people suffering from those symptoms. More from Public News Service's Roz Brown. 
Known as Sunshine Calls, the study recruited 240 mostly homebound older adults suffering from depressive symptoms. University of Texas at Austin study author Minnie Kalin says the phone calls were made by people who were not healthcare professionals but had undergone a brief training about how to listen and ask questions. She believes the study adds to a growing area of research focused on alternate models for delivering mental health support. The calls never preach, right? They are always about the topics that are of interest to the participant. Now, will it help everyone? Probably not. But will it help a whole bunch of people? Potentially, yes. I'm Roz Brown. And I'm Max Pringle. You're listening to Sojourner Truth on Pacifica Radio.